Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at a model from the uh, transcontinental range R56, sometimes referred to as the Baltic tank locomotive. Now this model was available between 1955 and 1962, although I think in the last two years of production it was available in a maroon livery, which we'll see quite shortly. Fairly smooth running model, just running around the inside line there. Very gentle purr coming from the motor. Great looking thing, isn't it, with the headlamps at either end of the model there. We'll run back through uh, points number eight, onto the outside line there, smoothly off into the distance. I think this black variation I have is, is a fairly early model. It has the uh, Mark II style couplings there. Plain valve gear and definitely solid wheels. The decals are in reasonably good shape. They're just beginning to lift at the edges. Aren't there just so many rivets down the side of this model? It really is uh, quite a thing. And a great big coal bunker at the back there filled right to the top. And we've got that other lamp just at the back there. The black variation of this model first showed up in 1955. And I presume it was made in acetate at the time. I don't think this is an acetate version. It's quite a dull plastic and it certainly doesn't seem to have any warping. It's a, a shame, I think, that they, they never tried to make these headlights into, a, into an operating feature. Just coming under the elevated section there, opening points number four, straight through onto the passing loop. We'll run around here and we'll pick up a, a group of very colorful tank wagons. Great noise those wheels make on the track, very solid wheels. Around we go. We'll slow her down, see if we can couple up with these uh, wagons. I think we have that. And then we'll move gently forward to, to the point in the track where I've got both rails isolated. So we can isolate her in the, in the passing loop here. See that red dot there. And then we'll throw the switches. That'll be useful later. And here we've got the maroon version I, I picked up a few weeks ago. And we can see, I think it's Basically the same body moulding, we've still got black lamps, not working of course, but if we look down there we've got uh, see-through wheels, fluted rods, and it's definitely got magnet adhesion, and it should have a smoke generator in it, but it's, sadly it's missing in this model, which may have helped preserve it in the long run. As we see when we, when we have a look inside, there is a little bit of uh, effect from the uh, smoke unit, the heating underneath the chimney there. The black paintwork has begun to rub away a little there, through handling, I suppose, over the years. See that cow catcher there underneath the coupling? That's been redesigned a little bit compared to the uh, the black variant of the model we saw just a few moments ago. We shall have a look at them side by side shortly, but I think it's survived in fairly good condition over the years. It's definitely done a bit of action on the track, this model. And then we've got that lamp on the, on the back end of the model there. And that uh, coal load does show up rather nicely on this maroon version, doesn't it? And that great ladder there, up the back of that very large coal bunker. We'll just open points 18 and 17 there to allow the feed through to the turntable there. Around she goes, and then we'll move the tank engine away up to the turntable. Lovely sound, slightly different to the, the black version, but still very smooth. And then we'll rotate again. There we go. and smoothly off the bridge now through points 17 and 18 onto the inside line switch those behind her and off around towards points number seven and onto the outside line we'll just have a, a look along the, the tops of both models together for a moment they're fairly impressive things side by side loads of detail across the top of the uh, the boiler there isn't there and dropping down at the front there, we can see the maroon one has the, the screw right through the front of the model there to hold the body in, while the black one has the, the screw down the chimney. And we've got the obvious difference there with the different couplings and the slightly different design of cow catcher employed to accommodate that. And we'll have a quick look down the other side of the models. Again, I, I love those ladders. We've got that lovely red plate on the, on the coal bunker there as well. Lovely plain valve gear, as I pointed out earlier. And the, the maroon model, I suppose, does stand out a little more just with, with the contrast between the black and the uh, maroon plastic. 
looks just that little bit more impressive on the layout and I think that's possibly why they introduced it to try and revive sales from what I've read. Both models have this little part missing, a little piece of plastic which would have protruded just above the surface of the cab here, leaving it very, very vulnerable to damage. And uh, it seems to have been broken away in, in both of these models. If you have a look at the, the catalogue image there, you, you'll see how it's supposed to look. Although when you see the uh, the catalogue image of the maroon one, they seem to have cut it off in, in, the, in the picture, but I think that's a that's a graphic mistake in preparing the catalogue, not that they, they changed the model. And there she goes, leaving points number seven behind her and off into the third radius curve, passing the colourful tank wagons. She'll slow down a little as she uh, negotiates the incline here, not too much. We'll add a little extra power to get her to climb a bit more enthusiastically. Great sound coming off the motor though, isn't there? I believe these models were made in some of Rovex's other factories around the world. So she could crop up in, uh, in different markets. I think that's one of the reasons for, for a design of a model looking like this. It would have much more appeal to the, the markets that Robots was trying to uh, make a mark in at the time. Gathering a little, path, little, little speed there, isn't she? Coming down there, off into the distance. And we're gonna stop just before points four there. We'll switch that over. And we'll bring her forward to the point. And we'll bring it to a stop again and we'll switch them back. There we go, and off into the distance. Lovely looking shot that, isn't it? So this is the securing screw from the black variation from straight down the chimney, and this is the securing screw from the maroon version from straight through the, the front of the model. We'll just pop those down, completely different sizes, aren't they? It's, it's enormous, that one. We'll just pop those down for safekeeping. Have a swift look at the, the black body first. We've had a, a good look around the outside of these models already, so we'll just have a, a swift look around before we look on the inside. See if we can get that shining in the light for you a little bit better. And then we'll just have a look inside. Fairly big old things, as I said earlier, it's a completely open space there in the coal bunker. And we'll get this in focus for you. It says made in England, and this is where the, uh, the chassis clips onto the bodywork at the back there. And that uh, roof is definitely a separately fitted part, as I suspected. It's a bit more apparent, you can see that on the maroon version. I'd had this black version for quite some time and not realised it was separately fitted. We can see the effects of oil spraying off the motor there on the inside of the body. I'm not going to clean that away too much. And then we've got the underside of the, the chimney there where the, the screw holds the, the model together. And. Uh, is that the, the model number there, R56. I'll turn that over a bit, I see Triang's name the right way up. There we go, Triang. So, fairly tidy condition. But, uh, I'm not sure how well they're sold. I don't think they made many of, of either variant, to be honest, although probably slightly less of the maroon one. We'll pop that down. And have a look at the, the maroon body. So moulded in maroon plastic, sprayed up in black. And as we pointed out earlier, some of the black work's beginning to, to uh, rub away, especially around the, the top of the, the chimney there. We can see that definitely is a, a separately fitted part there. Same number on the side of the, the coal bunker there. 4830. I think we still have uh, Made in England in, in the same place. Let's have a look. There we go, just see that? I think we've got that in focus for you there. Made in England. See if I can get that round a little bit more for you. It's hard to get this one to read in the light. There we go, I think you can see that. And looking in there, we can definitely see that that, uh, that uh, cab roof is a, a separately fitted item there. So, odd bit of molding to choose, I think, to uh, to get that cab roof separate. I wonder what made that a necessity. You can see the effect of oil spraying off the motor quite extensively there. And again, I think we've got uh, the model number R56. And we'll, we'll turn it around. We'll see Triang's name. Get that in focus for you there. And if we look down at the chimney, the underside of the chimney seems to have suffered. It's gone white there. 
and I, I think that's the effect of uh, the uh, the smoke unit heating up and uh, the effects of the, the smoke fluid or the, the vapour that the smoke fluid makes has, has made that go, go white there. I don't think it's sort of misshapen, but uh, it's uh, definitely seen some action. But fairly tidy things, we'll just pop that one down. And we'll have a look at the, the chassis from the Black Variant now. It's a much older style chassis. So it's two metal plates with the weights on the inside. Solid wheels. Lovely plain valve gear, and I really do like that. Heavy old thing. And the front of these bogies, the, the cow catcher detail is, is molded in plastic. Unlike when we see the other one, it's all one, one part metal mold, or casting, should I say. You cast in metal and mold in plastic, don't you? So we'll uh, pop that down. Have a look at both of these models run very, very smoothly. Let's see if we can drop, drop that one back on the track. I think that's probably close enough for now. We'll pick up the other chassis. There we go. You can see this is a, a solid cast, cast part instead of the two plates that we saw on the other model. We do have magnet adhesion, the magnet behind the rear drive wheel. And there's a magnet behind this front drive wheel as well. Of course, this is just the basic chassis from the Princess. So I suppose as the Princess chassis evolved, so did this. And the Princess got see-through wheels and this got them slightly later on as well. You can see that the cow catcher detail is just all cast as one part. It's very slim, isn't it? It could have done with a little bit more weight. And I think when I've had the, the bogies off this, you can see that Somebody has had some weight stuck to it to try and stop the sort of vibration and uh, keep it on the track, I think. But again, fairly tidy condition and it is a very smooth running motor. And uh, it uh, has done a bit of, bit of work by the look of it. It's not, uh, not the newest looking item, is it? But uh, done well to survive all of these years, I think. A quick look at the, at the, at the rear bogey. And that cow catcher is very slim, isn't it? And I think we might have trouble with the uh, uncoupling ramp there. There's not a lot for it to work with, is there? It's quite an interesting design, that. See the, the striker on the bottom of the coupling there? It barely, barely protrudes through the bottom of it. I'll have to have a, a try with that another day, I think. So the coupling is just sort of semi riveted onto it there. Now, as we have the other half of the uh, passing loop isolated, we can roll right up to the, the black tank locomotive there. I think we are hooked up there. Throw the switches, and we'll take both models out onto the outside line. Nice and smoothly away, making an absolutely tremendous noise there. Looking great under the gantries. The oil tank wagons came along in 1955 and to start with there were four colours, sadly I don't have the green one yet, but uh, the yellow one I have has its original box, R117, oil tank bogey wagon, TC series, great big heavy piece of tape that isn't it on there, attracted lots of dirt around the edges over the years, so we'll pop the box to one side. So the tank wagons went on in the British catalogue till around 1955 and I think they were, they were just producing the blue one by that stage with the Mark III couplings. But I believe from what I've read that uh, this particular model had a, had a longer life in different liveries in the Canadian catalogue. Just have a, a swift look over the models. Metal bogies on, on these early models. I think uh, by the time 65 came along, it would have had uh, plastic bogies with pinpoint, pinpoint axles perhaps. Just have a swift look down that side. We'll pop that down and have a look at this red one. It's a very muted red, isn't it? I'm not sure whether that's faded over time or whether it was originally produced in that colour. We'll just have a quick look around the other side. I think these are, really are quite lovely models. I'll just pop that down and have a look at this bright yellow one. Perhaps this one's a, a bit more in its original colour, having spent most of its life in the box. I believe they made up, the tank's made up in, in several sections. You can see the break in the moulding there. Still lovely things to have. 
just passing through the points number four and under the elevated section there. We'll switch those points behind them, colored light signals go there, off into the distance. And then we've got this lovely long shot here coming down the side of the suspension bridge across all of the point work. A little bit bumpy there, we can see the models jumping up and down a little. Lovely noise from those motors, really terrific. And then slowing a little bit to negotiate the incline, add a little extra power, and up they go. I don't think we're short of any, any power here with both these models. Absolutely effortless. Uh, Leveling out there, off into the distance there, approaching the suspension bridge. Lovely sight coming across there, isn't it? And another great item here from the uh, TC range, R115, the caboose. And from what I've read, it was first available in 1954, stayed in the British catalogue till about 65. And like the tank wagons, had a, had a much longer life in the, in the Canadian catalogue with a, a variety of liveries available over the years. And I believe there was a, a completely unmarked yellow one as well for, for starter sets, perhaps. Let's have a, a swift look around the model. Great steps molded into it here with the, the tops of the steps into the roof molding. Lots of chunky rivets on that on that roof roof detail, aren't there? Chimney very often missing. I believe you can get uh, um, reproduction chimneys to, to replace broken ones. Again, a step on the other end. These overhangs are a little bit on the, on the delicate side, I think. I've seen plenty of these with the, uh, the ends broken off. But uh, an almost childlike model, really, when you look at it, but it is surprisingly similar to the ones I've seen in pictures. So maybe they did do quite a good job of it. Under frame detail is very, very basic, isn't it? And we've got uh, Triang's name and R115 made in England. And this particular model has uh, open axle boxes, metal axle and, and, and sleeved wheels. I believe it did survive long enough to get pinpoints. Certainly the Canadian variants up into the 70s had, had the pinpoints and the plastic bogies. But really what I wanted to run on the railway today with those tank wagons was the model in this box. And this, this is the, the earlier caboose with the Mark II couplings. And uh, this one underwent a modification to allow it to, to negotiate uh, the uh, point motors on a Super 4 track, I think. It was a particular particular issue, sorry. I'll just pop that out and see the the uh, trying railways on the side has rubbed a little bit there and it's much bolder if we look at the, the two side by side. Let's have a, have a look at that. So it's a much bolder thing, but I think uh, a different style of printing was on this earlier one. It is very, very fragile. And if we just look at the, the steps there, I'll pick up the model again. I think it's uh, the heaviness of the overhang just clips on the uh, on the Super 4 point motors. I'm not sure if it was modified again when um, System 6 came along, but uh, lovely models and there are quite a variety, as I say, especially in the Canadian liveries, definitely worth having a look out for. And this one's got these much earlier bogies on it, hasn't it? And just have a swift look at those side by side as well. Again, really does finish off the, the train quite nicely today, I think. Just backing off the power a little now, just to slow them down a little as we come down the incline section here. Really terrific group of models, I think. And what a lovely sound that makes as they sweep past the camera under the elevated section again. Now we're going to go through points number five back onto the passing loop and see how well behaved all of these old models are coming through this crossover. Not really any problems there at all, all those deep flanges holding them perfectly onto the rails there. Now I think that's probably it for this week. Thanks again for watching, it's hugely appreciated. If you look back again next time, we'll have something else from the range to look at. Goodbye now.